Hey guys, we're back here at the table of carburetors and I'm going to do a little, kind of a short video here about the CFM of quarter jets, how to tell which is which, how to identify them when you're looking at one. Uh, there's been a lot of conjecture and guesses and, and estimations of how much a CFM of quarter jet flows, but I'm going to tell you the direct truth on this based on fact. Uh, there was only two. There's a 750 and there's an 800. There were no 625s, there's no 650s, no 675s, no 725s, no 700s, no 825s, no 850s. Now from the factory, now there's some, I think there's some people that uh, resell quarter jets like Elderbrock that claim they're an 850. I don't think so. But uh, from the factory, there was only two. So if you hear somebody say otherwise they're full of shit they're just guessing at it so because I'm sure they probably don't know anyway uh, you know if you have some guy well, yeah I think got 875 CFM quadrat I think it came off a big block Buick well no it doesn't have 875 it probably did come off a big block Buick but most of those were 750s and there were fairly rare ones that were 800 but uh, I'm gonna. I got these two parts carburetors here. One of them's actually a good carburetor, and the other one's a pile of junk. But I'm gonna use these to illustrate the difference here, real quick. The way you tell a 750 from a 800 CFM car quadrajet is very simple. This is the top of the carburetor. This has got the air horn off of it, but you would be looking down in. Uh, you know, from the top, you'd be looking down in here but you take a look down in here you look right where this little angular ring is here now look at oh, see how we're looking through here see it's got a it's got that little ring right there on the side of it this booster is what this is actually um, see how thick that thing is look at it all the way around Notice it's uniform, does not bulge out anywhere. It's the same thickness as the tire circumference. Well, that immediately tells you this is a 750 CFM quarter jet. So, why? Okay, let's look at the actual 800. Here's the same area in an 800, and the first thing you're going to notice is see how that ring is thinner? That's the first thing that's a tip off. Looks pretty much the same, but it is thinner. Now look over here. It's got a little baby bump on the side of this wall here. There's one on each side. Well, my thumb's covered, but there's one over here too. Okay, that's an 800. That's a that's how you distinguish the two of them. If it's got the thick ring with no bump, it's a 750. If it's got the thinner ring with a little bump out on the side of it, that's a 800. An 800, excuse me. So that's it, cut and dried, folks. That's how you tell the difference on one of these. You just gotta look down the throat of it. It has not a damn thing to do with the secondaries of it. Uh, now this actually does control the how much it flows, but that's a function of engine and how much airflow the engine requires and things like that. It has nothing to do with the carburetor design. But uh, there is one special carburetor, which I have my hand on right here, which I'm gonna talk about in a separate video because I want people to know about this. It's important, you gotta know about it. <laughs> no, seriously, this is the old 307 carburetor and I'm gonna do a little video on that. But anyway, if you got any questions on that, ask. But that's real simple, that's the two ways you tell. Just look down in the primaries, it has nothing to do with the secondaries at all. Don't worry about that side of it. And remember what I told you, there's no 625s, there's no 725s, there's no 700 quarter jets, there's no 785s, there's no 815s, there's none of that bullshit. It's only 750 or 800, so if you got any questions, please ask. Have a good one.